Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Okay, so hello and uh, welcome. Uh, so today I kind of wanted to talk a little about um, an important concept that not only a an attacker will need to understand, but an important concept that will a defender will need to understand, um, especially to our students that are um, com competing in cyberforce games and other games, and that has to do with logs. Your system has a lot of logs that are, are on your system. And I'm sure that a lot of you probably know where they are, right? So like in Linux, we know that there's var log in Windows. Um, you know, we have this idea that most of our logs are going to be um, in some particular directory, right? So like either that's going to be um, in, in the web root for say our IISS server, or they are going to be in some other directory in C. But one of the things that um, I think is really powerful is the ability to actually watch those logs in real time. So let's, let's just kind of take a look at that. So this link is uh, from TechMint, and they are talking about four ways to monitor logs in real time. Um, and some of these are some of these commands that they talk about here are are useful, but um, I am of the opinion that you should always use commands that are already built into your system and learn those because you may be in an environment where you don't have access to those. Um, so let's go ahead and open up a um, a VM, and we'll go ahead and take a look at those. So. Let's go ahead and open our Fedora VM right here, and we'll go ahead and power this on. So while we're waiting for this to come up, we're going to first talk about Windows logs, and then we're going to talk about Linux logs. So over here, I have a, um, I have a Windows 2019 server, and I'm going to go ahead and log into it. And I'm going to actually need to set in the password. Great. So let's let's pivot back to this log, uh, to this blog here. So we're going to try to watch these logs in real time. So these are PowerShell commandlets. So let's go ahead and navigate to some part of our file system so that we can take a look at those. Um, Windows, and then we'll just look at our debug logs. Okay, so we've got um, a set of logs in here. Um, got net login. We got some DC promo and some other things like that. So these are related to Active Directory. So if we wanted to actually watch these logs in real time, we would start a uh, PowerShell administrative prompt. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the way that you can do that is in any file explorer. Um, you could go file, hover over open PowerShell, and then open as administrator. And that makes it a lot easier to, instead of navigating around because it kind of went fast and I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. So get content is the commandlet that we're going to use. Um, we can also autocomplete. Be aware that a lot of times you will see on blogs um, that they will have things capitalized. And that's just the way that like the underlying .NET class inside of PowerShell works. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, PowerShell is smart enough to just take care of whatever you're throwing at it as long as it matches the actual syntax, right? So in this sense, we're saying wait and then tail and then I'm going to put 30 just like the blog. So let's take a moment and actually talk about what this is saying and maybe i'll um, open a magnifier so that we can look at this a little closer <clears throat> all right cool so we're going to go ahead and zoom in and we're going to go over here and look at this okay so we say get content dc promo so we say the commandlet get content and we're asking it to look at the file dc promo um, and then we ask it for a wait command. So this is telling it to, hey, go ahead and continue to spit out new lines anytime contents of this file changes. And then we're asking it to do a tail of 30. 
why tail? Well, that's going to be kind of useful to understand later on because that also translates to the Linux world. So when I do uh, that 30, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, um, and maybe I'll unzoom as much as I am. Okay. So now this is updating in real time. So if new log data came in, this would automatically update for us. And what you're basically seeing here is uh, exactly that. Like we are seeing whether or not new data is going to drop into our logs. So if we did more actions on the server, we would see new log information come up. And this is, this is really useful. And when we're saying tail of 30, we're saying, give us 30 lines. So give us the last 30 lines. So continue to update us and give us the last 30 lines. All right, let's go ahead and um, reduce our zoom and let's go back over to our Linux box. So that's Windows. Um, one other piece for Windows to pay attention to is if this seems a little complicated, um, our good old friend Notepad++ is also out there for us. And let's go ahead and download Notepad++. And one of the things that you can see in Notepad++ is Notepad++ will have up at the top of the task of the toolbar, a, um, an eye icon. That eye icon does the exact same thing that we just saw. Um, oh, and I guess I'm not downloading Notepad++ today. All right, never mind. Um, so Notepad++ is a text and source code editor, um, and it has a lot of um, a lot of amazing features. One of those amazing features, and maybe we could just see an image of it instead. Ah, oh, here we go. Perfect. So if you see here, there's this eye icon. So this eye icon, whenever you open a file, um, you can open a Notepad++ as an administrator. Um, and that's what you should do if you're going to go this route. You can use this eye icon to automatically update the, uh, the text file that you're looking at. And that's really fantastic because that allows it to watch what's happening in that file in real time. So looking at a log in, on a Windows machine with Notepad++ um, really can help you because you can split your view and other things like that. Um, like you can put one file over to the, to the other side and things like that. All right, great. So, so now that we've covered Windows, let's look a little bit at Linux, All right? So we're gonna, again, focus on TechMint and they're saying uh, tail tack F. There's also this multi-tail LNVA um, and there's also the less command. So we're going to talk only about the tail uh, tack F because this is uh, the one that you're gonna probably run into the most. So we're gonna go ahead and log in to our box over here. This is my Fedora box. I'm now jumping over to my VM and I'm gonna go ahead and log in as Tron. Okay, great. And then I'm gonna PWD so that you can follow along. So all, most logs in Linux are going to be in um, a thing called var slash log. And so we've got a lot in. Um, we can also use other types of commands like journal CTL to look at our log information. So let's go ahead and briefly look at that um, later. Let's first talk about tail tack F. So we always want to issue, we always want to at least try to have some administrative privilege when we're trying to look at a log. An administrator should really be the only person on the box anyways that's looking at a log. So we'll do tail tack F. And we'll say var log, and we'll just um, we'll kick that a little bit. And looks like we have a Samba share. So let's go ahead and look to see if there are any logs for Samba. So the reason why the it's updating like that is because I'm going ahead and I'm um, hitting tab to autocomplete for me. Um, and so now it's asking me for my password again. Great. And so now I'm looking at the log in real time for uh, DNF. So let's give an example of what will actually happen if we were to update this log. Um, so what I can do is, since this is VMware, I'm going to go ahead and connect to SSH. And I'm going to bring this over here. 
and um, I'm not going to do that because I don't have my Active Directory connected right now. So I'm going to have to do another SSH configure and um, I'll just do Tron and I'll go ahead and connect. All right. And then we'll do great. And then so let's do sudo tail tack f var slash log uh, dnf dot log. Let's have this update and then let's do sudo dnf update <clears throat> and boom so right as we ran the command we now see this log populating in real time for us and this is really useful if you're troubleshooting a server or other type of process right most everything is going to have some kind of log and um what's really useful for anybody is all you really really need to do and it may take a while, it may take multiple pages, but you could just say, copy this link here. And um, I'm simply going to copy that. And I would go over and I would open a browser and I would go to Google and I would just paste whatever that is. And then I would search for it. And I could not resolve the host name. And boom, that's it. That's how I would troubleshoot is I would, my first step would be, um, my thing's not working. Cool. What does my log say that is broken around the time that I thought it was broken? Um, and then that's that's where I would look at it. Um, another one you can look at is uh, journal CTL, tech XE. Um, so this will keep a list of all processes that are happening for your system D framework. And if you're on an Ubuntu system or a Red Hat based system, um, this can be very useful. This can be especially useful if a system CTL process has failed. Um, so a system D process has failed. You can run uh, journal CTL XE. Um, you can also specify for journal CTL, like the user that's specifically running a service. And then you can take a look at it. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's kind of about it that I wanted to show in terms of um, logs and, and Linux and Windows, um, because I think that, um, yes, as security professionals, um, you know, we, we should know how to defend a computer. We should also know how to attack a computer. But there's also that component of being a good system administrator, because those are the people that you're going to be working with the most as a security professional. And if you can understand a little of what the tools are in their toolbox, you can try to solve the problems that are broken um, on your thing. I've definitely used uh, TailTACF when you know I'm trying to run um, an Apache or something like that to serve up a web shell or some other things like that, or just in general in my day-to-day. -day. Um, so with that, I will um, 